Chemistry is not a new subject. It's actually been known about for a long time. In fact, all the way back in ancient Rome, philosophers knew a little bit enough about chemistry to classify the world around them. Uh, an ancient philosopher by the name of Democritus coined the term atmos to describe small spheres that made up the world around them. Now, this was all theoretical, but he actually was pretty spot on. And we u later used the word to describe atoms. That's where the word comes from. Uh, uh, Democritus said that these spheres made up everything around them and were invisible and indestructible. And he was pretty close. But after the fall of Rome, we kind of entered the dark ages of chemistry, also known as alchemy. Alchemy was a mysticism based around trying to change different metals into gold. And they most of the time were trying to change lead into gold. So some good things came out of, of alchemy, um, but not a lot of goods, not, not a lot. Uh, there was a little bit of scientific discovery, but not much. And in fact, it wasn't until almost the 1900s when we actually started to see real work done in the field of chemistry. A scientist in England by the name of J.J. Thompson was working on electricity. And he found that when he passed an electrical current through a vacuum tube, it caused, uh, it caused this metal that reacted to the electrical current to light up. So he said there must be something to the electricity, there must be something to the metal that is causing this to happen. Well, this current passing through this vacuum tube became known as a cathode ray. In fact, it's the principle for your television set. A cathode ray runs from the ca cathode of a power source to the anode of a power source. And he found that when he brought a magnet near this ray, the beam would bend towards the positive end of the magnet and pass away from the negative end. So he said, well, this beam must be negatively charged then. So he determined that all matter, or he theorized that all matter must have some sort of negative component, which he called an electron. And since matter is neutral, when you touch stuff you don't get electrocuted, there must be also some positive part. So he theorized that the atom looked like plum pudding. Now he was English and the, the, the English, or sorry, the British call almost every dessert pudding. So plum pudding is actually not pudding, it's a bread. And he theorized that the bready bits would be like the positive energy and the raisins or plums would be your electrons that were just floating around randomly inside this sphere of positive energy and that's what an atom looked like. Now another scientist by the name of Robert Millikan wanted to know a little bit more about electrons and he decided he was going to try to figure out what the mass of an electron was. So using oil that he electrified he suspended a single droplet of oil, very very small amount, and using more technology than I feel like explaining to you, he determined the mass of an electron to be extraordinarily small, like beyond small, as in like 10 to the negative 23 grams small. And this kind of puzzled scientists, and for the longest time, about 10 years, there was no real understanding of where the mass in matter came from, because it obviously was not coming from the electrons. They theorized maybe it's coming from the positive component of the plum pudding model. So the way that I remember Robert Millikan is that he worked with an oil can. J.J. Thompson, you're just going to have to remember, goes with plum pudding. And their work came together to, to give us our modern understanding, or one of the biggest breakthroughs in chemistry, <coughs> comes from a scientist by the name of Rutherford. Rutherford, working on the principle of the plum pudding model, hammered out a sheet of gold foil to about the thickness of two or three atoms thick, and he shot alpha particles at it. Now when the alpha particles strike the zinc sulfide barrier, they make it flash and light up. And when he shot this beam, an interesting thing happened. While most of the particles made it to the other side, several bounced off the gold sheet 
or were deflected around it. And he said this was kind of like shooting a gun at a piece of tissue paper and getting shot in the head. It made no sense to him. So he said that those particles must be bouncing off of something. It can't just be tearing through the plum pudding. They would have had to bounce off of the plum pudding. So he said the atom must be mostly empty space with a dense, thick core, which we later came to call the nucleus. Now some of his assistants worked on the, that principle as well and found that the nucleus must be where all the positive in the atom is. Um, and when they f added up all of the positive charge of the atom, they're always coming out to be about half. So another one of his assistants went on to say, well, that nucleus must also contain something that has no charge but equal mass, and that's where we got neutrons from. So the current theory of the atom has been a gradual evolution, starting with Dalton's theory that the atom is just a sphere uh, that contains all matter to Thompson's theory of the plum pudding model where the atom is a sphere of positive energy with negative electrons embedded throughout to Rutherford's model where the atom has a dense core nucleus and mostly empty space later another assistant of, Bo of Rutherford's Bohr said that the electrons orbit the nucleus much like planets orbit the nucleus so we got an orbital model but the current understanding of the atom is based on the fact that electrons behave as both a, sorry, light behaves as both a particle and a wave, and therefore has several properties that you'll know about when you get to AP. The current theory of the atom shows an atom that looks like this. Where electrons are found in probability fields, there's a chance an electron is found here or found there because you can never really know exactly where an electron is. It's too small and moving way too fast, so this is called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You have no idea exactly where an electron is and how fast it's going at the same time. And since you don't know where they are, they could be in several places at once. And this is the quantum theory of the atom. So uh, electrons are held in probability fields at distances set from the nucleus. And that will lead us to... Uh, next video on subatomic particles.